Sometimes the part that you need for your project car doesn't exist. Generally, the more interesting of a project car you're working on, the less likely that the aftermarket actually has the part you need. I have this one-of-a-kind engine swap where I decided to put a 6BT Cummins into a tiny little Ford Explorer. This is not your normal Fumman swap because first off, it's into a tiny little SUV that never even came with a V8 from the factory, much less a big turbo diesel. And second, I decided to use the big six cylinder 5.9 liter engine, not the little four cylinder. This is the full size truck engine and it has made a lot of problems when I was building this car. Some of those problems I had been ignoring. I just wanted to get on the road and drive it and I figured the small issues could be dealt with later. The thing is though, you never know what the issues are gonna be with your project car until you do drive it. Sometimes the small issues turn into major issues. I finally drove it and ran into one very big unexpected major issue. Typically on a 4x4 like this, you do not expect to be comfortable. When I built this thing, I figured I didn't need HVAC yet. That is heater, ventilation, air conditioning, that type of thing. I didn't need it yet. What I didn't count on though, is that if I didn't install the heater box at all, then not only do I not have HVAC, I also have a gaping hole in my firewall between the engine bay and the cab. This confounds with the problem that I put a big hood stack on this thing and it kind of belches diesel exhaust. That exhaust ends up going straight into the cab through that hole in the firewall where the heater box is supposed to be. Now, if it were just me, I could live with this. I would just unroll my windows and maybe I'd deal with it once I started to get lightheaded. But the thing is, all the things I wanna do in this Explorer, like off-roading and camping and mountain biking, those are things that I also wanna do with my partner, which means she's gonna be riding along with me. She doesn't like the diesel exhaust filling the entire cab. She says that it makes her sick and she doesn't wanna ride with me. And that's why this minor problem of a hole in the firewall has graduated into a major issue. What's the point of having a four x four if you can't use it with your loved ones? I've gotta fix this problem so that hopefully I can convince my partner to actually ride in this thing. It isn't as simple as just installing the heater box though. The reason the heater box isn't already installed is that it's trying to occupy the same space as my turbocharger. Even when you do a fum and swap on a truck, this is still an issue. Ford trucks just happen to put their AC evaporator exactly where a Cummins stock turbo wants to go. But this problem is even worse because this isn't a truck, this is a little Explorer. In order to get this heater box installed, I've gotta find a way to move the turbo. So the rabbit hole of installing the heater box begins with trying to move my turbo. Now, because this is an issue on Fummins trucks and Fummins trucks are actually a somewhat popular swap, the aftermarket does have parts to fix this. They make an aftermarket exhaust manifold that takes it from a center mount turbo to a low mount rear turbo. And the idea of this is that it gets it below and away from the heater box. The other cool thing about this aftermarket manifold is it also includes bungs for exhaust gas temperature or EGT sensors. And it's a performance upgrade and the stock manifold was pretty old to begin with. So this would be a really good solution, but not for my Explorer because on my Explorer, I needed to get the Cummins engine really low on the chassis in order to make it fit and to keep the center of gravity low. And to do that, I move the motor mounts up. Because I move the motor mounts up, now they're in the way of me doing a low rear mount turbo. I'm not gonna move where the engine is, so low rear mount is not an option. So on to the next logical step. What if I just take that aftermarket manifold and flip it over? Cummins cylinder heads are symmetric, so you can do this. In fact, some agricultural applications do this stock. It's a high front mount turbo. This also had a host of problems though. The first one is that it puts it really high up, like sticking way out of the hood high. Now I haven't made the hood for this thing yet. I'm not that opposed to just hanging the turbo out of the front of the hood, but it is gonna be more work. And frankly, it's so high, it looks pretty ridiculous. But there's another issue. It's also really close to the engine like almost touching the valve covers close. It's so close that the fuel lines are actually in the way. I could bend them out of the way, but it's still so close to the valve covers that if I ever went with a bigger turbo, it wouldn't fit. So this is an okay solution, but I need to come up with something better. I really liked it being on the front since it gave me tons of clearance to my AC and everything else. So I figured the easiest way to move this thing would be to just make a new turbo mount that moves it out and away from the engine. I looked all over for aftermarket turbo mount solutions that would do this for me, but unfortunately it's just a really extreme amount of movement this thing needs and there aren't any aftermarket mounts that I could find that would do this. 
And that means I need to make my own. So time to design a turbo mount. What the mount does is it just takes the turbo and clocks it 135 degrees off the side of the engine. The way I was gonna fabricate this was use a bunch of custom plates and then buy a couple T3 turbo flanges and weld those to each end so there'd be no machining or anything involved. This would not be the quickest or easiest part to make by hand, but luckily I have a secret weapon. Believe it or not, I recently purchased a CNC plasma table, and I think this is the perfect project to put that thing into use. Since I had my own plasma table and since I was making this part completely custom anyways, there was a few cool features that I was able to design into this thing. First off, a stock Cummins Turbo and HX35 comes as a twin scroller divided setup. It has a divider in the center that separates the exhaust pulses from each of the cylinders so that the turbo is always getting exhaust pulses to spin it up. When I made this mount, I wanted to keep that center divider plate so that I can keep this twin scroll design. I was really happy that I was able to keep this feature. The second thing I added is a bunch of tabs and slots into this thing. The hardest part about fabrication and welding is fit up. By cutting some slots and tabs in this thing, most of the fit up is done for me. I just put it together like Lego, run my beads, and it's really quick to get really high quality welds. Now let me give you a few disclaimers here. First off, you do not need to spend as much money as I did in order to do this type of fabrication. Do not use this video as a justification to say that you have to spend all this money in order to do this job. It's silly to have something like this in your garage. It's ridiculous that I own this thing. You can cut this out with an angle grinder. On top of that, there are plenty of places online that will cut stuff like this out for you. But the reason I didn't like that in my case is that design is an iterative process. I really like being able to go out of my garage and iterate upon a part that I make and make it again and again until I get it right. Having a plasma table in my garage means that I don't need to get it right the first time. And I don't have to wait days for the mail to arrive every time I want to iterate and make a new part. And then finally, my last justification for this thing is I see it as an investment. There may come a day in the future where I wanna make high production rate parts instead of just one-offs. Maybe I'll even make them for you, the viewer. When that day comes, this plasma table will be my first major investment into this YouTube business. I'll discuss that more in the future. Once I got this thing all welded up, it was time to paint it. Keep in mind, this is an exhaust component, so I had to use high temperature paint on this. This isn't just normal paint that you spray on. You actually have to throw the part in the oven in order to cure the thing. I think this paint says that it'll take like two or 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. And if my exhaust ever gets that hot, then I'm gonna have to worry about some molten pistons before I have to really worry if my paint's being ruined. While everything was apart, I also figured that I'd wrap the manifold. The point of doing this is to keep the heat in the manifold as it goes to the turbo. There are two reasons to do this. The first one is that, like I said, it's a giant engine and a tiny little engine bay, and lots of parts are really close to the exhaust. The insulation will make sure I'm not melting things. The second reason is that it's actually a performance upgrade. The job of a turbo is to recycle waste engine heat and turn it back into mechanical power. The turbo uses enthalpy to pump air. The more heat that you keep in the manifold before the turbo, the more efficient the turbo is and the more power you make. Your turbo should spool up faster and it should help low end power a little bit. At this point, now all I need to do is actually install the turbo. Of course though, it's never that easy and there are a couple issues with this as well. So I made this little bracket to mount my coolant lines. I think it's adorable. It looks like a little robot or something. The first issue was that my oil feed line no longer fits. The new location of the turbo means that one, I need a longer line, and two, the existing fittings ran into the manifold. I took apart Cummins stock lines and they had really weird fittings on both sides. There was an adapter that looked to me like it was an SAE O-ring boss, but actually it turned out it was a metric fitting and then it adapted to a inverted flare fitting. Now I've seen inverted flares on things like brake lines, but I've never seen it on a big oil feed line like this. I wanted to get rid of all of these janky fittings and move to something that's a lot more standard. So I ended up adapting the metric fitting to a simple JIC. JIC is like AN, but with different tolerances. JIC and AN are both really nice because they're just a simple flare. You can unscrew them as much as you want. You can build hoses for them out in the field. They're really good for maintenance. They're really good for taking things apart and putting them back together. And they're just easy to use. I really like them. I think the new JIC setup looks great and works great. Any future turbo modifications will be a lot easier now that I have standard fittings on here. The next thing I had to do was extend the oil drain line since that also wasn't long enough. And then finally I had to extend the intercooler piping. And that's turbo installed. Sometimes having a one of a kind project is a pain in the neck. Every little thing turns into a really large ordeal and you find yourself running down rabbit holes a lot. Creativity can be a bit of a curse. 
Life would be a lot easier for me if I didn't dream as big, in the short term that is. In the long term, life would be boring. I never push myself, I would never learn anything. At the end of the day, being challenged makes you into a better project car builder and makes you into a better person. I'm happy to take the road less traveled, even though it can be frustrating sometimes. Overall, I am very happy with the new turbo location. I won't have to cut a hole in my hood anymore, probably, and I can fit as big of a turbo as I want without running into the engine. Most importantly, I can now plug the hole between the engine bay and the cab and hopefully not asphyxiate myself or my partner when we're riding along in this thing. On top of that, I have every part installed now in order to actually give this thing AC when the time comes. Somehow I even managed to do some performance upgrades and upgrade my fittings, my exhaust manifold, put in EGT probe. This is just all around a much better setup. The cherry on the cake is of course that now I have a new tool. I'm really excited about this plasma table and I think it's opened up a world of possibilities for me. I expect that my future fabrication will take far less time while making far higher quality parts. I'm excited to continue working on this thing. If you're excited as well, then consider checking out the video where I put a hood stack on it. Otherwise, thank you for hanging out with me in my garage today. Now, get out there and build something. I hope to see you next time.